work depending on where you are. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm doing an update and I'm starting off with silver here uh, because silver quantitatively, uh, the numbers that I have here, uh, the metals basically show an upside movement of large magnitude is possible. So we're going to see, uh, looking at the structure and so forth here and the volume and the, the statistics, they all, they all match up and um, a breakout here that could be pretty significant uh, is likely to occur and if it hits that I'm not going to predict, I don't predict, but I'm just letting you know the numbers are coming across as being very good. So we're going to watch silver here. Uh, if you do get a larger breakout here, do not be surprised. Um, it, uh, it's looking pretty good. And I'll just draw some lines here. Boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. and whatnot. There we go. So we can see what we're looking at here. And boom, boom, boom. So ultimately, you know, I was looking for the mid thirties on this. Um, the numbers come across. Uh, a larger magnitude move upward is kind of likely statistically. Um, and so we're going to be watching silver here. As well, you know, last week I had my exit on Tesla, and I want to review that one with you guys. And so forth. when it dropped under uh, the 40 number and, and went to this area right here, um, I exited all of my position, and it pretty much lined up right with this high here, into here, into this candle here. Um, you know, so it was a perfect exit. Anything under, in my opinion, 360. Uh, this is ideal, of course, because it has intersection with these candles and whatnot. The more hits that you get here statistically, that's where you go. And sure enough, it does bounce up back up. Um, this is the, the move up into battery day on the 22nd. Now, I do want you to understand one thing. All I was looking for is us to move down to this target zone and that, that trade's over with. This is a first blood type of trade. This also had significant relevance just like the silver trade it currently has. Statistically, of an upside breakout is very possible or even likely. This had very significant relevance for a move down to this area. Now, where it doesn't matter, we get a little bit of exaggeration and it touched all of these levels here, which is fantastic, gave us the exit point and is now bouncing. Um, again, this is such an overvalued stock. Uh, temptation to take it again to the, the short side? Yeah, I would be, but the problem is that this is filled out, so I'm in no rush. Um, you know, yeah, it's very overvalued, but. I know I had a target and it was a technically perfect setup within a given period of time for this area here. I'm not going to push it. I took my exits, uh, took the profits and moved on. Um, one thing I, I did note, uh, a trader, not in uh, part of what we do, but um, they, they did not have an exit plan for such a great trade and they could have closed out at a much higher level and uh, they decided to hold help they held their position they decided to hold I can't even talk anymore um, and uh, there were all kinds of factors uh, that were uh, against them and uh, they didn't pay attention uh, they got into dream mode and it's a young millennial um, it's kind of typical uh, and it was interesting that they ticked off all the boxes for the things that I try to pe teach people not to do. And um, very ironic because uh, they basically uh, ignored the market and well, they paid for it. Uh, you know, they didn't necessarily lose money, but they didn't make as much money. 
And let me show you the elements of this. This was the QQQ. And uh, as you see here, we have a support area down here, just like with Tesla that you saw before. And uh, this was a repeating pattern in a lot of stock charts, by the way, this type of uh, uh, you know uh, structure. And uh, you have your divergence formed right here. And then you have another one, and then the last one up there into this hangman. This is called a hangman. This is not a pattern you want to see, and so forth, the peer in a chart. Uh, you have many elements. Well, this person had this staring at them, and they still held. They still tried to fight the market. Um, this is a good example of where you would exit. Now, you would have a downside. A good trader would have a downside game plan. He would say, okay, I'm going to set a trailing stop. I'm going to set some criteria of which to exit, whether it's an uh, equity or whatever. This person did not do that. Um, even though I mentioned it to them several times and I was trying to make the point, the factors against them were not good. They decided they wanted to go for it. And uh, they were going to fight the market. And they were using options. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it's, it, options, sometimes the mentality is very gambling because it's an all or nothing type of trade. But you do not have to trade them like that. You can use them and you can also hedge against them in a correct manner. Uh, but this person let their emotions get to them. And uh, I noticed that they did several things. And one of them was they went into dream mode. They started talking about buying real estate and uh, you know they were very hyped up on it because when this trade was going all the way up here and it was within this period of time here when we we're spiking upwards and all they had nothing but uh, emotions and they were you know uh, you know well ironically enough they didn't they didn't cover their down downside and uh, they didn't have a game plan to exit as a trader always have a game plan for when things go against you. Uh, know what you're willing to uh, lose as well as, you know, um, you know, be aware. You had all the signs, but they decided to ignore them. And they suffered because of it. You know, I think they took a, a minor amount compared to what they had originally. And many times uh, on this move, you know, and I just found it kind of sad because of the fact that uh, they, they're they not able to view the market objectively and I, I guess it's a lot of it's due to their age and, and, and whatnot but neither here nor there uh, a good example of things that you want to pay attention to and always look for the market to you know from a non clouded judgment non emotional uh, this is why it's so important that you have to see things for the way they are uh, try to not ever be one-sided because then you, you turn into like uh, a politician and you're all, always going for your party whether it's bull market or bear market and that's not the way it works these are all numbers things go up and down and uh, your goal is to make money in trading not to be right or wrong uh, not to predict the future no uh, yours is to um, make good trades, and listen to the market. Observe, plan, and execute. I repeat that because it's so important. But anyway, uh, so they didn't do as well as they they should have. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I just thought it was interesting that uh, all of the elements of what, you know, uh, a young trader, well, you know, I hope they learn from it. And, uh, you know, that's, it is what it is. Anyway, let's go to Bitcoin last right here. And we see that we recently bought when it slipped under 10,000. Um, I was a buyer at 9,900. Now my sell point is going to be right here at 10,800. This will now become a resistance between here the low 11,000 area and this area here, this will now turn into a resistance point. So it'll be interesting to see what it does here. Um, and I would look for a move to go further back down. 
uh, after it does that. So I will be exiting that buy that I have down here and right there at 10,800 and above. So keep that in mind, we're almost there and um, keeping an eye on it, but uh, uh, yeah, um, keep that in mind. Uh, as well, we have um, the, here's the other one, the synthetic. And I like this one, but again, this is not really for trade for me. If I was to have traded it, I probably would have exited a good amount of it right here at 61.8. But I'm holding it. I want to see what this thing does. I don't have enough of it and so forth to really care. Um, it's gone into my different buy points. One, two, three, four. So I've got four. I've got another position down here waiting to get filled. And we'll see what it does. Um, I... You know, the DeFi space has been rocked a little bit this week, as we've seen with some of the projects, the Sushi and Yam and all, you know, uh, all, <laughs> the news has not been very good. But I really like this project and uh, what they're trying to do. So, as you know, uh, these were my buy areas. If I wanted to, I could have looked for that 61.8% level. You can see where it ran right up to it. Uh, that would have been a good exit point, but no. I'm just going to hold. I'm going to look for bigger numbers. I think it could break out to the upside. And that's basically it for the week. Uh, so we're looking at Bitcoin to take the exits at this area up here. Um, we've done well on Tesla. That was a great trade. Um, and uh, silver, the breakout. So let's see what happens here. This could be exciting. Could be it could get some uh, good follow through, and uh, we'll see if that happens. Again, the quantitative statistics, the numbers, everything that I'm looking at, all my algos, they point to a higher degree of magnitude upwards within this given time period. Within uh, basically until the mid, um, I should say until. Uh, even uh, the 20th of October, uh, basically, is what the box is out to. And around the, the first uh, few days, uh, so let's say 20, 23rd, uh, in that area right here. So we'll see what happens. Uh, see if we get, a, indeed, a larger move up in the metals. And go from there. Other than that, you guys have a great week, and I will talk to you again next time.